Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, knitting, cross-stitching, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about self-care, productivity, and keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my tea in hand, so grab yours, and let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 102. Hello friends, it's good to be back. I took another unintentional break. It's been about a month since my last podcast, but things have been busy around here. I've been traveling and kids have come and gone, Um, but I am happy to be back with you now. As a matter of fact, I just got back from a trip um, from to Massachusetts, right? I flew in and out of Hartford, Connecticut, which is a lovely city. And I got in the other night at 2.30 (laughs) a.m. (laughs) <laughs> but yesterday I, I got up and did my chores and um, tried to get back to a, a normal schedule. And today is Sunday, May 21st. And um, we are going to head over to the Strawberry Festival, which is a, a local little festival around here to celebrate the, the Oxnard strawberries that we so dearly love. And uh, it hasn't been around for about three years now, so I'm happy that it's back and um, kind of trying to make up for the fact that I flew across country on Mother's Day last week, which was not my favorite Mother's Day. But I'm just kind of uh, adjusting to the fact that uh, there's going to be a lot of Mother's Days where no kids are around for various reasons. They've, They've got their own lives and all three of them had come and gone in the previous weeks. It didn't make any sense for some anyone to come that weekend anyways. But yeah, it's uh, empty nest life. <laughs> it's not what I expected in some ways. And um, I think I mentioned this in the last podcast. I'm going to Stockholm next month in mid-June for a um, for a work thing. But um, my husband's going to come at the end of that meeting. And we're going to spend three days um, just bumming around Stockholm and seeing all the fun things. And I'm really glad that worked out. I really wasn't sure he would, he would, uh, you know, put in the effort to, to come because, you know, really only for three days for him. I'll be there for like nine days. But um, yeah, I'm super excited about that. It was just, it's that kind of a tough time mid-June where um, one son is, um, he's moving out of his, uh, his college dorm into, or college uh, on-campus apartment over to the apartment that he's going to be staying in for next year. And um, our normal dog sitter was not really available. So the kids, they all they all pitched in to, to make it work. And Chloe's coming home to watch the dogs. And, and Jonah's helping Ben move. And so it's all it's all come together. And um, I'm, I'm just super excited about that. I was doing a little research about the things that we should see in Stockholm. And I got this idea of... Um, typing it into chat gpt so i'm sure everyone's you i'm so i assume you've heard of chat gpt which is you know an ai tool and i said plan a three-day vacation in stockholm and they told me exactly what to do and what you know start here and walk over here and have lunch here and um so i don't know that i'll do it exactly like that but it, it gave me a good starting place so that was kind of a a fun use for that tool that we're all a little bit afraid of so, um, so yeah, so I'm going to be headed out here in a couple hours to uh, go enjoy the Strawberry Festival with my husband, so I won't be super chatty this morning. Oh, but I am drinking, it's got, we've got to talk about the tea. I'm on a mission to finish up um, a lot of my, uh, my tea collection right now, just because um, it's, the, the containers are becoming a little overwhelming, so I need to clear some out. So, um, and I got to tell you, these Harney and Son containers, I feel like I should save them all. These tin containers are beautiful, but I've learned that I won't do anything with them. So I am um, drinking currently the Harney and Sons Citron Green, which is obviously a green tea. And I'm looking for the, uh, the description, a great introduction to healthy green teas complemented with citrus flavors. And I've got the, they make the best little um, tea sachet. So it's loose leaf in a, a very nice tea bag. And it's um, a wonderful um, thing to drink in the morning where you maybe you've already had coffee and you don't want a little, you don't want too much caffeine. So that's what's in my cup. And I'm wondering what is in your cup right now. 
Well, before we get on to the quilting segment, um, I want to once again thank the Fat Quarter Shop for being such a wonderful sponsor of the podcast. The Fat Quarter Shop is a one-stop shop for quilting fabrics and supplies for quilters around the world. They stock quilt shop quality fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, notions, and as we know, even cross-stitch supplies. So the Fat Quarter Shop just announced the Holly Jolly Quilt Along. Have you seen this? It is a gorgeous quilt pattern from Lella Boutique, one of my very favorite fabric designers. I don't think she's ever designed anything that I didn't absolutely love. So this quilt um, has uh, like little Santa heads and holly berries and these adorable Christmas gifts, um, kind of in a medallion style quilt. It's absolutely beautiful and it features the Christmas Eve line by Lella Boutique and it's just it's these you know obviously it's reds and greens and it's just it's absolutely beautiful Um, and I would do it like exactly the way <laughs> that they have done it. It's just perfection. But of course, you can do the quilt along with whatever fabrics you want. So that starts on June 30th, kind of a fun way to, to quilt into July, a Christmas in July type deal. Um, there'll be more information on um, the quilt along. It's already on the Jolly Jabber, but they'll be dropping more information on June 15th. Of course, there will be a link in the show notes. You should totally check it out. All right, so for once, I feel like I have a little to talk about uh, on the quilting side of things. It's been a month since my last podcast. Whenever I say that, I always feel like it sounds like it's been a a month since my last confession. (laughs) But I finished all the squares for my great granny square quilt, which is a pattern by Lori Holt. I cut all the sashing. I laid it out how I wanted to sew it up. And then I was going to sew all the sashing the week before I went on my trip, and it just didn't happen. And then the block started slowly falling off of my design wall, and I'm really glad I took a picture because they're now in a big pile on my on my sewing table. But that will be my job this week is to um, do the sashing on that quilt, and um, I don't think I'm going to do an outer. I might do a thinner outer border, but not. I'm not a one for big borders. I don't know. I might not do a border at all, but I do like the sashing with little um, cornerstones in it. So I'm very excited about that. I challenged my friend Vicki over at My Creative Corner 3, who was kind of at the same point, like she had two blocks to go. Um, I'm just like, let's finish this up. So she finished her two blocks. She's doing her sashing. So we're kind of um, limping to the finish line together <laughs> on that quilt top. So that, um, that's been kind of fun to have someone to sew along with. So I'm trying to think of what's next up and I am really trying to finish up what I've got. So the quilt that I think I would like to finish up next is um, a quilt that I've already made before. So that is always like, eh, it's hard to get up for doing something you've done. But it was a quilt that I gave away, which is Cabin Valley. It's a modern log cabin. I love the colors and I do remember that it sews up so fast and I would love to personally have that quilt. So I think I'm going to um, have that one up next and I completely lost traction on my scrappy spools quilt along um, I think I still were in May so I, I need to do the April blocks and the May and that's another Lori Holt pattern um, I'll put a link in the show notes um, it's got these small like maybe five inch blocks and then you put squ- spool ends on them at the end so um, and there's just like a couple just a few just a handful of blocks every month so w- that will be um easy to uh, get back on track with and since I did my whole sewing room organization I'm I've thrown a lot more fabrics into those scrap bins and so I think that will be a nice refresh because I felt like things were getting a little repetitive speaking of my sewing room refresh I keep tweaking it those those uh shelves that I put behind my sewing and I had I had shelves behind me and my sewing my uh, my ironing board to the right of me so that I could just iron without getting up. I didn't like it. I didn't like how you saw those shelves. They they weren't as pretty as I was hoping they would be <laughs> when you walk in and see them. So now they're tucked off in the corner and my my ironing board is out where you can see it. But if we were having guests or something, I could easily put the ironing board away and that would be easier. So I keep kind of tweaking that, but um. And I, I still need a new sewing chair. Um, so still kind of working on, on things like that. The other thing that I meant to talk to you about when I um, I talked about my sewing room declutter in the last episode, I believe. And I found a, I have a Juki and I found a video um, that I, I linked in the last um, show notes 
um, about, uh, I, I realized I was threading it slightly wrong, but, but they talked about cleaning it. And one of the things that I learned from watching videos on how to clean your sewing machine, and maybe you knew this already, is to use Q-tips to like get inside your bobbin case and underneath there to get that dust out. And so um, I bought a little thing of like a hundred Q-tips <laughs> that are cute and blue, um, that were for like for six bucks at Amazon or something, just to get in there, just to have the, the right tools to keep that sewing machine clean and um, they've come in so handy I've really um, I've really liked having that little tool at my disposal I often I use a vacuum to clean out um, inside there too to get that dust out and not blow it deeper in but the q-tips really help me get into those little areas um, so last episode, I also gave away a number of quilt patterns, and those have all been claimed and mailed. And um, that was so much fun because so, so often when I do giveaways, people say, I have never won anything, and they are so shocked that they've won. And I so love hearing that. I love being a part of um, the fact that, that you guys have uh, finally won something fun that I hope you'll use. So... Um, the Fat Quarter Shop um, so kindly sends me things, you know, like every month. And they sent me this month a couple more patterns that I'll probably give away in a future podcast um, because this podcast is all about giving away um, cross-stitch patterns. But I did want to talk about these. So there's one called Flower. They're both by Kim Deal. Um, they're both designed by Kim Deal. And one is called Flower Peddler and one is called Spangled. And Flower Peddler is one of those... Um, again, always link in the show notes, um, those clever designs where the, the dominant, um, pattern is like a, is like a little, uh, flower, but then it's got that awesome secondary pattern in with the background that creates another flower, which so, it's just so clever. People are so smart. And the other one is called Spangled and it's very cool. It's done, um, you know, the, the one that's on the cover is done in, you know, those um, kind of the the dull uh, 1800s, you know, Civil War reproductions. So it's, it's got that vibe to it, but it could also be really cute in patriotic flower, uh, flowers, fabrics, um, you know, kind of a red, white, and blue thing. But it's like courthouse steps intermixed with... Um, what star is that? That's a that's a sawtooth star, and it's it's just it's very very cute. It'd be, make a very cute patriotic quilt. So I'll put links in the show notes. You can check those out, and I'll probably give those away on a future podcast. You know what I would love is um, if you you know after you listen to this episode, head on over to the Simple Handmade Every Day Facebook group um, or Facebook page. The group is the private group. The page is more like a, the business page and share what you are working on. I am not being, um, a very prolific quilter, not that I ever was, but at all right now. And so I get a lot of inspiration from seeing what you guys are working on. So please feel free to pop over there, share, um, any types of projects that, that you're working on. All right, let's talk about cross stitch. I finished Flea Market Flowers. It is, how long, I may have been working on this, I should look back, maybe nine months or something. <laughs> it's a big, it was a big project. Um, it's not all pressed and everything, but so Flea Market Flowers is this kind of Scandinavian flower design by Lori Holt, and it's it's fairly big. So now um, I think this is one that I'm going to frame. And I might put it in the kitchen in our eating area. I think that might be a place that would be cute to have some cross stitch. We're also redoing two bedrooms, um, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And um, I think it would be um, kind of cool to, uh, you know, maybe maybe put it in one of those bedrooms. I don't know. I think I'd like to put it in a place where I would see it. So we're back to the kitchen. Um but I'm glad that one's done, even though I, I absolutely enjoy doing it. I'm ready to work on some smaller uh, projects right now. So I've got lots of choices for that. But um, what I'm thinking about, well, first of all, one that I'm thinking about is a new cross stitch pattern that I got from the Fat Quarter Shop. It is part of their Stitch Quarterly, and it's called, um, so they, they do these Stitch Quarterly boxes, and then I think um, some of the patterns in those become available later on. And this is one of them. It's a pattern by It's So Emma, and it's called Sweet Laurel, and it is so pretty. It's um, got a... Uh, 
a flower that with with blue and then um, some like roses and ivy around it it's very simple um, pattern a little Scandinavian I would say and they have it finished into one of those kind of long skinny pillows and it's not very big so it's 63 inches high and 93 stitches wide so the finished size is six and three quarters by four and a half so um, and it's all done with DMC oh this makes me want to see if I have these colors and pop over to Michael's okay so this might be the next one I do I, I didn't know that when I started this podcast because I'd also pulled out the stitch cards, which I talked about, I think last week, which is set O, which is, has a bunch of the little kind of sampler style designs. Um, and then the other set is set P. These are the stitch cards by Lori Holt, which is sewing themed. And it has like a little quilt and a sewing machine. Um, so those are very cute. And those are only like, how big are they? They're, they're something like 36 by 36 and this one is 34 by 34 so they're just very small and I think I'd like to do a few of those and um, stitch them into tiny little pillows because I did I got this dough bowl which is very at uh, this wooden hand carved bowl for Christmas and right now it's full of those kind of um, you know you go to Target and you get things called bowl fillers <laughs> vase fillers so it's like driftwood and these uh, little twine balls and things like that and it looks perfectly nice but I want to put I got it to put little cross stitch finishes in so I need to get on that project so I think that is what I will be doing cross stitch wise the other smalls I have are the cross stitch the rainbow patterns that I bought that are along with this tea time stitch along um, so I'm I started one on linen using silk and I do love it, but the only reason I haven't gone back to doing it is it's on 32 count linen and I really need to sit there with my Halo Go light and magnification to do it, which means that I'm kind of sitting at a table instead of um, very unergonomically curled up on the couch where I can stitch on like 25 count Lugana with that type of light at night, but I can't stitch linen that way. So I, I need to kind of figure that out. So um, I, I'm so happy to have finally finished flea market flowers and I'm ready to move on to, to some of these um, fun little small projects. All right, so let's talk about uh, a couple of the other uh, patterns that the Fat Quarter Shop has gifted to me. There is a new um, pattern in the Chicken Club. This is a little chicken called Beatrice and she has, um, she's in this great uh, uh she's she's an aqua colored chicken obviously with navy blue wings um and she's got a, a little chick next to her so that's very cute um and adorable and i am going to give her away with her friends okay i'm going to do these in order um of the chicken club and so I'm going to give away all four of these. So we have chicken number one, Cornelius. Oh, you know what? The little chick is in every one of these. He really gets around. Uh, we have Cornelius is is more of a rooster, obviously. We have Florence, is which is number two. Hattie, who is a pink chicken, number three. And Beatrice, number four. So um, if you would like to win these four, then head on over to the show notes where um, I will have you. I will figure it out when I'm making the show notes. But you'll just say chicken club. You know, I'm going to put up, uh, I guess, just... Um, I'm going to give away three things all four chickens, all four stackables, and then um, I'll tell you the last one in a minute. Okay, and you'll just tell me which ones you would like to win. If you would like to, if you if you would be happy to win any of them, you can just put down all of them and uh, I'll figure it out. Okay, so the other pattern is called stackables. And this is, again, this is a, a series that's going for the whole year. And um, so I have April here. So the, the idea with this is there's, it's a long skinny um, pattern. It is, for instance, it is 12 inches tall um, and three and three quarters inches wide. And there's a, a little wooden basket, kind of like a whiskey barrel um, at the bottom. And then there's all kinds of like seasonal things that go into it. So for April, there's a carrot and an Easter egg and a tulip and a, and a bunny. So I have uh, January stackables, which is all about uh, snow and ice skating and things like that. The February one, which has lovebirds and a cupid's arrow and roses. The March, which is all about spring watering cans um, and butterflies and flowers. And then April, which is kind of uh, Easter 
themed in a way. So if you want that one, head on over to the, the show notes and let me know and I will be sending those out. And the last one is this really cute one. I thought about keeping this for myself. I've had it for a while, but I'm just going to share the love. So this is another pattern that was in this one of the stitch quarterlies, and it's called Fall is in the Air. And I remember Kimberly saying that this was one of the most popular patterns that they had done. And so it might be kind of fun to get this now so that you have time to stitch it for fall. And um, so it says fall is in the air and there's a little fox. I remember they did the cutest fox needle minder to go with this. And he's um, kind of under a tree that has a lot of, um, you know, leaves in the, in, that are orange and yellow and burgundy. Very cute. So that's going to be a, a little single giveaway. So that is it for cross stitch. Just uh, again, head over to the show notes and I'll be giving those away. All right, let's talk about books. When this this uh, time, it's just book. <laughs> I got from um, the libraries an ebook through Libby, Life in Five Senses by Gretchen Rubin. Um, if you've been around her for a while, you know I love uh, Gretchen Rubin and um, the stuff that she writes about. And this, I didn't, I wasn't sure I really wanted to read this book. It, it didn't sound all that compelling to me, but I decided to go for it because I do just generally like her. And I'm not, I'm kind of at the beginning, to be honest with you, but I love the idea here and I think it's going to be very interesting. So the the premise of the, the book is one day um, she went to the eye doctor to get new contacts and I've already forgotten what prompted this conversation, um, but the doctor said, that she better be careful about something because it could cause a detached retina and she could lose her sight. And, it, you know, it, it wasn't like something that was eminently going to happen or anything like that, but I guess she knew someone who had a detached retina and lost her sight and it really shook her. And she lives in New York and so she was uh, walking home and life just sort of sprung into crystal clear <laughs> focus for her as she was appreciating her sense of sight and just what would it be like if she lost it? And, and, she, and she admits, you know, if something happened to her, she would still live a, a, you know, fulfilling life. But it just got her really interested in how she was taking for granted her sight, um, all of her senses, that she was in some way sort of sleepwalking through life, which I think we were probably, we are all probably guilty of, right? And, you know, she just started thinking of, you know, um, she had just seen her sister and, you know, she hadn't even noticed, like, was she, uh, was Liz wearing her signature little circle necklace or, you know, just little things like that she realized, you, you know, um, things about her husband. Uh, she went in to buy him a birthday present and um, she was looking at sweaters and the man said, like, does your husband wear sweaters? And she's like, I don't know, does he wear sweaters? Like was his favorite color like you know just all these things were you know you just kind of take things for granted so because she likes to turn these little projects into books she decided that she was going to dive into all the senses and she was going to explore them kind of one at a time so I'm just um it's so it's you know sight and smell first those are the two primary ones but she's just going to go through all five of them so I'm in sight where she is just really diving into noticing things and um and I think it'll be a good exercise to also um inspire me to notice things. One thing that, that I'm looking out the window right now, and we are in Southern California, May, we get this thing we call May Gray, where it's overcast every morning. But I have noticed um, that in the morning when I, in the, when it gets the sunny, or, or no, just light, like it is now overcast, our backyard is like this weirdly vibrant green it's not a dark green it's like vibrant it almost seems like it's glowing and and that's something that I just kind of notice and I think maybe it's because I've been thinking a little bit more about sight and I'm kind of uh, interested as we go to the strawberry festival this afternoon to kind of drink in those I'm sure there's going to be a lot of reds and greens and um, a lot of you know beautiful plants and, and things like that so anyways um I'll report more on it as I get deeper into it, but I am enjoying Life in Five Senses by Gretchen Rubin. All right, let's uh, talk a little bit about TV. I finished the second season of Happy Valley, the the worst name show ever because nobody is happy in Happy Valley. 
<laughs> but I got hooked. I got hooked. And there is a third season. I think it hasn't, there hasn't been a season in like six years or something, but I'm excited. And I think it drops next week on, on Acorn. So I'm looking forward to um, checking out Happy Valley season three. And on social media, um, I follow, you know, I, I subscribe to Acorn and um I said, you know, I follow them on like Facebook. And so they're always telling you when there's new seasons of things or, you know, telling you about the shows that are on there. And then I get into the comments and listen or, and read how people, what people think of them. And there was a show called Candace Renoir and I'd seen it and um, I think I'd started it once and it didn't really click, but I really dove into it. So Candace Renoir, there's like six seasons and I just checked. I'm on season one um, and it's from 2013. So it's 10 years old. It looks pretty timeless, though. I got to say, the way people are dressed. But um, this is one of the things that's fun about it is it's in French. It's entirely in French. It's not overdubbed or anything. So you have to read the subtitles. So there's two unfortunate things about that. That means I can't knit or stitch and watch it because, um, you know, I have to read. <laughs> I also can't do it when I'm sleepy because as soon as my mind water wanders or I take long blinks, I'm lost. So, but that has been, um, it's, it's, you know, okay. So I should tell you what it is. Um, Candace is a, uh, a woman who is newly divorced and, um, she has four kids and she, uh, is an, an, an expat. She followed her husband, who I don't even know what his job was, all over the world. So they're they're living in Singapore. They're living they're living all over the place. And then he cheats on her. They get a divorce. She goes back to France, where she was a police detective um, before she had, you know, before they started moving. And so she has been out of the workforce for about ten years. And so part of it is her being a little behind the times. So yeah, so between, let's just say 2003 to 2013, you know, the internet, software, all that kind of stuff and police work really came into, you know, um, being normal. And so she, she's really a little behind and, and she's doing the whole thing of being, trying to be a mom to these four children and do prove herself, do a great job as being a detective. So thing she's just she's always falling short in both of these and the struggle is real um but she's also very intuitive so she's got this quirky way of um i don't know when she's looking at a body or something she's you know kind of poking around and sniffing and she'll always come up with something that everyone else has missed she's very intuitive and she kind of is quirky in that way and so people don't like to work with her <laughs> <laughs> but she's very good at what she does. So that's Candace Renoir. Completely enjoying that. I watched a lot of those on the plane when I flew to Connecticut last week until I started falling asleep and then cannot li even listen to them. I mean, I could. And it's fun for me because I did take a lot of French. I always wanted to be fluent in French. So I'm always kind of, as I'm reading the subtitles, I'm keeping an ear out for things that I recognize, you know, and um, so that part of it is, is really fun for me. All right, in this last segment, I kind of wanted to talk about a few updates on some goals that I set at the beginning of the year. And one of them, one of my goals, um, the, the overarching theme of that one was health, where I wanted to establish a strength training habit and lose some weight. Haven't lost weight yet, but Somebody had mentioned you know, um, when I was talking about that, probably back in December or January, like, Kristen, you just need a personal trainer. Just like, you need to just, you just need to do it. You need someone to tell you what to do. And, and she was not wrong. But I, I didn't do exactly that. But um, I have a friend who has been doing this workout class for, I hope I didn't talk about this in the last episode. If I did, forgive me. Um, she's been doing this workout class for like six years that meets... Um, outside this church in town, outside, <laughs> the class starts at 6 a.m. And I told her, just like, let me know when it's light at 6, then maybe I'll give this a try. And it's it's one of those kinds of uh, workouts that I'm having deja vu, like I've told you this, where um, we, we pull out all the equipment, those big ropes and TRX straps and steps and weights and rubber bands and all, you know, all kinds of things. And um, 
we have a set workout that we do and you you do this like like so there's let's just say there's five stations you do that exercise for like 40 seconds which i'm telling you is the largest longest 40 seconds of your life you've got 20 seconds to get to your next station you do 40 seconds there and then you do depends on how many stations but like four to six rounds of this and it the whole thing um, the whole workout takes 45 minutes it's hard and I actually always have to chuckle to myself because we do a pretty decent warm-up and I always think after the warm-up that if I was doing this by myself not in a group I'd be like okay I'm done and I'll just like go for a walk like after the warm-up <laughs> <laughs> it's like at, at 607 I would just walk away um, but because of the peer pressure um, I'm in there for the whole thing and the beautiful part about this I've been doing this for a month now and the beautiful part about it is um, I, I get up at 530 that's not the beautiful part I'm out of the house at 545 I'm working out by 6 I it's over at 645 I'm home before 7 so the only thing I have to do is show up and then just momentum will take care of the rest. And I don't have to think about what exercise I'm doing. I don't have to go, should I keep going? Should I stop? I mean, you just, you go do the thing. So it's just taken the decision fatigue out of it for me. Um, and so I do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And here is my real, um, my real victory is I was, uh, away all last week Monday Wednesday Friday and I talked to the the person who leads it and she created a little um, workout for me to do in the hotel gym which I did all three days because I didn't what I didn't want to do is like f feel like I was starting over when I go um, tomorrow on Monday I just wanted to feel like you know I just continuing the journey and um I've never, I mean, I go for walks, but I've never been good at like working out on the road. And so, um, so yeah, I'm feeling really good about that. I feel like that is such a step in the right direction. So I've, I've been consistent for a month and I just feel like maybe scaling back on the food sides of things is going to come next. And then maybe I'll see the, the results I'm looking for, but just from a osteoporosis standpoint, from a strength and she works on strength, balance and flexibility. So I just feel like I'm hitting all <laughs> I'm hitting all the things that I should be working on at my age and so that has made me feel really good the other um, project is the two or two kids rooms which we are updating for let's just call it this phase of life so I went through all um, I went I'm starting with the boys room went through everything that room is now emptied out um, I had the carpets cleaned in both rooms and we we're looking into having them painted Oh my gosh, painting is so expensive. Having I it didn't used to be so expensive to have someone come and paint a room. So we sadly are going to paint the rooms. <laughs> um, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And it'll save us a lot of money. But I'm a little disappointed about that because uh, we, I haven't had to paint for a long time. And I don't feel like we're especially good at it. But we're painting in some pretty neutrals, you know. So I, it, I think we'll be fine. Um but so that's underway and I started looking for, we started looking for furniture for that room. We wanted to put a queen bed in. So I gave away the bunk beds and I took, I stole the shelves and could not find what I was looking for online um, until I kind of realized I was searching for the wrong thing. What I need to search for, because I want kind of lighter weight guest room furniture. I don't want master, you know, bedroom furniture. So searching for platform bed really helped. And I found some stuff at Crate and Barrel that I kind of liked. We drove down to the valley to look at it. And it was, I don't know, 80%. Like, eh, it's it's good. It's probably the best we're going to find. But there were a few things about it that kind of irked me. And so we didn't move on it yet. Um, and then we went down to Ventura one day to go to this museum. And we're walking along Main Street and um, went into this little furniture store and it's one of those things where we walked around didn't see anything and as I was leaving I turned around to look for my husband and realized like the exact thing we were looking for was right in the front window so um we ended up buying a little a, a bedroom set or queen bed and a chest and a nightstand and it's 100 percent wood Amish made um kind of made to order like right in the same price range it was amazing so um that's being built right now and we won't get it till July but um, that just the fact that that furniture is ordered we ordered the mattress so I just want to make sure that we get that bedroom painted before that furniture goes in so I just feel like okay I felt like I was spinning my wheels for the first you know 
three or four months, four or five months of this year on that project. And, and now we're kind of making some steps. So just, you know, just we need to keep just being consistent about it, which I, I uh, sometimes struggle with. And then this wasn't even on my list, but we had a landscape designer come over and check out um, our backyard to help make it more drought tolerant, lower water. And I don't know if we're going to go with this particular person, but she had some fabulous ideas about um, creating a new seating area out there and, you know, redoing our garden to some raised beds. She just had so many fabulous ideas that I've gotten excited about the backyard, which has been pretty hands off last year and this year. And it, and it shows it's kind of like, we don't want to invest much in it until we figure out what the plan is going forward. Um, so, so that's been kind of exciting. And lastly, um, I've discovered a few Instagram accounts lately that I'm just loving. And I thought that I would share some of them with you. The first one is called it's a flavorful life. And it's one of those cooking Instagram accounts, which luckily she has a blog that goes with it. Um, cause this whole saving recipes on Instagram, I don't know, it just it doesn't really work for me, but she usually has a blog uh, connected to it. And, um, she just has, it, it, she's kind of into the whole bowl thing, but she often shows you like what her refrigerator looks like at the beginning of the week, just full of colorful fruits and vegetables. And she sets the camera up like right next to the cutting board. And she's just chopping kale and massaging it and chopping up avocados and squeezing lemon, like everything just right on this board. And, um, just, so many delicious looking recipes. I think I might've talked about uh, sheet pan dinners one time, uh, maybe it was last episode. And one of those is hers. It's the, it's called, um, what is it called? Now I can't remember a veggie power bowl. Is it called that? Because it's actually got some sausage in it, like apple chicken sausage. And it's so good. We're having it again this week. So it's a flavorful life is, um, just a beautifully inspiring, um, cooking and healthy eating account and then kind of I don't know why I love this kind of there's another one called Mac Lorena and um, she is a young Canadian mom and she has so she's got like I don't know I, like a three-year-old and a one-year-old or something like that so she's in an absolute different time of life stay-at-home mom but she has this great way of um, she, her tagline is use what you have and her other tagline is it'll be fine <laughs> which is hilarious. So she is always just whipping up like, I'm going to make a my kid's lunch out of all the leftovers we have in the fridge right now. And, um, and then she's, you know, she'll be putting these recipes together and she'll be like, okay, yeah, well, we don't have this. So I'm going to use this or we're going to leave it out. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And it's the kind of account that I, I wish that I had seen early on in my life. Um, and I think it would have helped me become a little bit more creative. You know, I'm the kind of, I, if I don't have lemon, I'm running to the store for lemon. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a, uh, we use what we have. It'll be fine. I'm like, no, I'm going to go get the right stuff. And I wish I was a little bit looser in the kitchen. The next one is so random, but it's this account by this Jewish woman and it's called Jewishly Liz. <laughs> And she's very into making challah bread, which is very fun to make her wa watch her make. And I would actually really like to try it, although there seems to be a lot of sugar in it. But she has kind of a this minimalist vibe. Um, she has a beautiful home. And I was completely intrigued by all her posts about how she prepared her home for Passover, um, where she taped up her cabinets so that she wouldn't go in for those things that had touched yeast and she brings out separate dishes and I don't know it was just it she just has a great vibe so that one's called Jewishly Liz and the last one is one I just recently discovered and it's called Jamie at home I believe and um, again I'll put the links in the show notes but she's an interior decorator and she her style is exactly like what I not exactly she uses some her kitchen has this very beautiful but kind of in your face wallpaper but she's just like a master class in um how to style your home like and I, I i would like to i think i'm gonna take a few little projects onto myself of like i want to figure out how to like style our kitchen table um and my dresser and and things like that i think um and she uses a lot of of books and plants and you know um different textures 
and I just absolutely love her vibe. So I just keep going through her account, like trying to absorb it so that I can do something similar. So those are just like four recent Instagram accounts that I'm just really um, just loving right now. Okay, so um, I want to talk about reviews. I must have uh, mentioned that no one leaves reviews anymore because then three people left reviews and I love you for it. So thank you so much to Quilter Paula and to Matt P220, who um, said that uh, they would like to be neighbors, and I completely agree. And also, RAR268942, you guys all said just beautiful things about, um, you know, the, the, the content, and that it's uh, a lot like just sitting down and having a cup of tea with your friend. And that's exactly... Um, how I feel about all of you. And also thank you to Carol who sent me an email telling me that um, she also shares a birthday with her husband and has never met anyone else that has the same birthday as her husband. And neither have I. So Carol, now you are the first person I've ever met. You'd think it would just happen more often. So that's it for this episode. Thanks again for leaving the reviews. I love it when you guys leave reviews and it does help other people to find the podcast. As always, you can find me online at my blog, Simple Handmade Every Day, on Instagram at Kristen Esser. And please, again, uh, consider joining the Simple Handmade Every Day private Facebook group so that we can find out what, what you're reading, watching, and sewing, stitching, whatever, and we can keep the conversation going. Have a wonderful week.